Uh, let's go from Texas down to Latasha Brown in Florida, and you've been working in Georgia, and Georgia also in Florida and some other states. But uh, what's your story on, on, on Georgia, Latasha? What have you been doing well, there? Well, the first thing I did right was the day I started to fight. He cried on the side and hold on, hold on. I like to start, I often start, because I think it's really important for us to be grounded in culture and context. And being a daughter of the South, right, that song actually was a, was a, a staple song in the voting rights movement. But what I want to share is uh, some of the work of Black Voters Matter, which I am a co-founder with Cliff Albright, um, and an organization called Black Voters Matter Fund. And part Woo! of what... And so, um, and we created the fund for a number of reasons. One is there are a lot of people who care about black votes, but don't necessarily care about black voters. And we care about black voters. So our work was on a strategy that we uplift and to build black political infrastructure throughout the country. And part of what um, I want to just mention this first slide, if you look at this first slide, and I want to, Sister DeWanna raised it earlier, we talked about the investment. I don't know if we really know how stark the difference is in, in, in right. investment and the disinvestment that's happening in the region. There's a study that NCRP in terms of, they um, pulled out um, some of the data from foundations and investments. And if you can look um, at the average in a place like New York, it's like $203 per person for civic engagement. You come back down to somewhere like Atlanta, um, and it's $19, and then you go to somewhere like Alabama Black Belt, of which I am a native of, it's 51 cents. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the level of investment, it's almost zero investment of what we see in the region. Right. Now, I am a, a daughter of Alabama, but I am a Georgia peach. And, and a citizen of where we're going to have the first African-American woman as governor. I just Woo! Want to Woo! If we can go to the next slide, what the next slide. What I want to talk about, I want to use my time, I really want to talk about kind of the strategy, like six points I want to raise around the strategy that we use of Black Voters Matter. The first thing I want to talk about is really around rural voters. We've actually, and we've urbanized political mobilization so much that what has happened is 80% of African American voters who live in this country, 80% of us, live in this small little swap called the Black Belt that stretches from the Carolinas all the way over to Mississippi. What we're finding is there are, there are rural communities and places like Georgia that if you want to win the governorship, you have got to invest in the That's infrastructure, right. in the rural infrastructure in Georgia. That's we right. work in Florida, but we work in, we're working in Central mm -hmm. Florida and the Panhandle. Many of those communities have high black populations, but they're usually ignored in the election cycle. So throughout the black belt, you look at Tennessee, West Tennessee, Right. If you look at places like in, in North Carolina, in East North Carolina. So part of our strategy, one strategy I think we have to really look at and think about, and part of what we've been focusing on, is how do we maximize this rural opportunity and the rural vote where there are African Americans that the turnout can actually make the difference. A second one I want to raise is around using the existing infrastructure. Oftentimes, and as a political strategist, I'm actually an owner of True Speaks Consulting, and we do political strategy. It's, uh, we put operations together. You all know, you, do, you put a hit team together, you go in the community, you hire folks, and then when you leave, or when that operation leaves, the community is just That's there, right? right? right. So what it, it, it is equated to is what you've done is you just round up the voters, mm -hmm. right? And not necessarily like being counted, not necessarily empowering. So our strategy is very different. Our strategy is we tap into the existing infrastructure. So for example, in the Alabama election, what we decided to do is not necessarily we had to go and find people to do the work. Um, what we did is we actually funded 32 organizations, mm -hmm. folks who are already on the front lines every day that when everybody else is gone, mm -hmm. they're on the front lines of doing that work. Mm -hmm. And so as a strategy, we think that if you're tapping into the existing social infrastructure, that may look like churches, that might look like community groups, it may look like sororities, and really think about a network which leads us to the third strategy is around relational organizing. That's right. So part of how we do our work is that relationships matter and you're doing relational um, organizing. The last, last couple points, two points um, that I raise is around, oftentimes we get, hot, we're, I say we have the savior syndrome, 
particularly on the progressives. Who's going to come save us next on a horse and just make all of our problems go away and get rid of those crazy people like Trump? Right? The problem with that is we don't, the problem with that is if we're censoring all of progressive and democracy around one candidate, That's right. one is unfair for the candidate and it's unfair to us. So we think that in terms of the strategy, you cannot build a sustainable power building campaign that's centered just around the candidate. A candidate can be a part of the process, but it's only a part of the process. And then the last point that I raised is really around black women being the vanguard. And we hear that and we know we clap to it and that's fine. But what we're saying is the investment has to follow the theory. And so our work, 99% of our work is actually we are led by black women. We're intentional about not just asking them and seeing them as workhorses. We're intentional about lifting them up in their vision and their work and investing in them. So I think it's really important as we're thinking about strategy that we're actually connecting all of those things. And so if you make sure that you all look, Black Voters Matter, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the work that we're doing and some of the other strategies we're using. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. I love this. And our final top political strategist is about the pipeline, Sayu Bhagwani. You know, when she started singing, I was like, oh man, I am so screwed. <laughs> like, between the song and the senator. But you set me up really well because um, I can talk about a couple of quick stories to